Hey there YouTube, welcome back to the Allegheny Northern and N scale. You are looking at an Intermountain SD40-2, one of my absolute favorite locomotives, as I'm sure it's many of yours. But that's not the reason I am uh, doing this video. Um, I'm doing this video because I have, over the weekend, noticed uh, at least three or four videos of people struggling with auto-reversing sections. And... Um, I understand it at first as to why it's challenging and, and if you're new to the hobby or you're new to DCC um, as I as I am uh, it, it might be a little bit a uh, little bit intimidating um, there's a lot of parts and pieces and circuit breakers and boosters and power supplies and just all kinds of things that in DC um, we just we never had to deal with uh, so now that if you are um, into DCC you're, you're like, oh my God, what are all the parts and the pieces that I need and what are all these names and I don't know what they mean. Take a step back, relax. It's not actually that complicated. In fact, it's actually easier. I'll show you why in just a moment. as the people in the videos that I watched um, struggled with the basics and I think that's why they didn't understand um, what they were doing as far as with the parts and pieces and why things weren't working so let's start with the basics in DC you have a positive and a negative side to your wheels as long as positive stays positive negative stays negative your trains run just fine and by reversing positive and negative your trains will go forwards or they will go backwards Okay, so in DC, if you had a uh, reversing section, you could connect two cabs, two power sources, control two trains, and let's say that was your forward, okay, and this was your uh, forward going into a reversing loop. Okay, so this section here would control your reversing loop, loop positive and negative. This would control your train on the main line. Okay, now once you would get into the reversing loop section, this little button here would take over and control your train. While your train was in the reverse loop, you had to take your main line and switch it in the opposite direction. What that would do is when your train would come to the end of the reversing section, or the Y, it would realign positive and negative. Now, of course, if your train then made another loop and came back in the same way, you would need to reset so that these two were always in line. Kind of a pain. You had to know what you were doing, you had to know where your loops were, you had to know where your train was, and you had to know where your isolation points were because if you didn't, then you would short out until you flipped the correct switch. Okay, that's wonderful for DC, pain in the butt, small layouts, not a big deal. When you get to a much larger layout and you're starting to run DCC, you're no longer running on DC power. You are now running on AC power. AC power does not have positive and negatives in the same way that DC does. What happens is the positive and negative cycle. So the rails at any one time will go from positive to negative and they cycle at roughly 60 cycles per minute. So people keep saying, well, you have to reverse the polarity. And that is incorrect from an engineering standpoint because you are not reversing the polarity because although there is a positive and a negative, I guess, if you want to look at it that way, your rails are neither. They are both, just not at the same time. Okay. That leads us to our problem, which the fine folks at Digitrax, NCE, and other DCC manufacturers have fixed for us. And they've actually made it a lot easier. Digitrax makes the AR1. It's an automatic reversing section. So what it does is it lines the cycle of your reverse section and your mainline section when the train enters and exits so that you do not have a short circuit. Okay, how it does that is, the device is hooked up, typically under the layout. Mine's not finished yet, so it's dangling. You have what I'm going to control, call the control wiring. And the control wiring is simply wires from either the bus line or from a section of the layout that is not in the reversing section. That sets the standard, that sets your control group for what the cycle 
uh, of the layout is as far as the AC power goes. The second set of wires coming out sets, reads, and sets what the uh, section, uh, the current is inside the reversing section. And so this little gizmo with all its little fancy things here takes that information, knows whether or not the cycles are lined up, and if it's not, there is a mechanical buzz that you will hear. Um, and what it is is it flips it so that everything lines up and your train passes from reverse section to mainline section without having a short circuit. Okay, now it gets a little tricky when you get into turntables, um, especially if you've got one that auto powers like the Kato. Um, in fact, I had a long, long, long session wiring this thing up, mainly because there were multiple feeders that all had to run through the AR and I may have missed one once or twice and that caused a short circuit. This is a lot simpler. Okay, so here's my situation. This is a true reverse loop. What happens is the trains come up through the helix. They can either pass through hitting the staging, which is obviously hidden behind this wall. They can pass out through here. If they run down the branch line to the left there and down into the coal mine, not a problem because they will then return back out the same way they came and they don't reverse. If they come into the business district and they're switching the industries here as our little SD40-2 is going to, they're fine as long as they are in the business district. If they back out the same way and pull their cars back into the yard, not a problem. But if they take the escape route, which is this little branch line right here, suddenly now they are facing in the opposite direction in which they originally came. And of course now we have a short circuit, which will show itself yeah, right about there. Okay. When you look at this detail for the AR1, this is the Digitrax version. Like I said, there are other versions. NCE makes them. There's a few other. I think there's one called DCC Masters. I'm not familiar with everybody. But my layout is Digitrax. I try to keep as much Digitrax as I can. Um, the decoders and all the components, it just it's worked very well for me. So I, I try to keep it all Digitrax. Um, they show a very simplistic plan. But basically it shows you, look, you've got your control group. All right, here's your control wire coming off the main line into the AR1. Here is your reverse section. And we're gonna go ahead and cut the rails so that now we have our control for this section and our main line. Okay, that's simple. Except there is an awful lot of track hidden behind there. There's five tracks back there, plus all of this stuff. There are multiple countless feeders. Um, it's probably going on at least 10 or 11 different connection points and I don't want to run all that through the AOR. So what did I do? I created this as an isolated section. So from that point to this point, that's all that's isolated. Everything else runs off of the main layout power. Now what that does is when a train enters this reversing section, it will automatically trigger the AR as soon as it reaches either that point down there or this point here and the cycle rates are not lined up. Okay, The AR1 is a mechanical reset. So when it resets, you do hear it click. If you have a room with two or more people in it, or like in my case, you're running the dryer, you barely hear it click. And once it's tucked up under the layout and hiding away like it's supposed to, you may not hear it. If you've got any locos with sound, you're probably not going to hear it. That's good for when you're running the layout, bad for when you want to test it. Because you've got a little test right here, an adjustment that you can make. Um, and this sets the trip rate by which the AR1 responds. So the whole goal is to trip the AR1 to flip the cycle before the booster or the circuit breaker does. In this case, it was set at the midpoint, and as you're gonna see, that's perfect for what I'm doing here. Just happenstance, I had a lot of adjustments to make with the turntable, um, but for whatever reason, the default setting on this seemed to be just fine. So, uh, let's go ahead and get our 
locomotive running. He's done with his duties for the day. He's heading back to the engine shop. And I want you to listen for the click when he reaches that switch point. There it was. You know, there's no hesitation in the locomotive. And he just sort of rolls right back over. Okay, now we're going to bring him back around here again. Listen for the click once it reaches the isolation joints. There it was. And now we're back up and running. Okay, the reason for this video was not to say that the folks who are doing um, different systems or, or trying different things or, um, are wrong. Um, if it works, it's not wrong. Um, but it is showing you that there are some options that are out there. Um, there are some other re auto reversers that give you a little flashing lights and indicators and all that sort of stuff. Um, if the flashing lights amuse you, if you need to see that, if that, if that helps you in some way, I'm not saying it's, it's bad. Um, it's useless for me. I don't, as long as it's running correctly and I can test it, then I don't need a light to tell me what it's doing. Um, but you may certainly add that if you'd like and it looks cool for visitors and all that other sort of stuff to see the little flashing lights. So um, there are other options that are out there and that are available. Um, so don't think that just because I'm using digital tracks or somebody else is using NCE that you have to have to stay the same. They're, they all, um, for the most part, do interact with each other. Um, so uh, for something that does not need a connection to say like LocoNet, um, which the AR does not, does not require power supply of any sort, you can go cross-platform and it's not an issue. Um, and and for, for me, staying with Digitrax is just personal preference. I've had good luck with it, it works, and it's pretty much as easy as I think you can make it. Uh, the instructions that come with the AR1 are, are very simplistic, and realistically, if you, if you wire it, um, and you think about the wiring process and, and what you're trying to accomplish between the control wiring and the and the reversing section, it is pretty simple. So these these instructions are are fairly um, complete. Uh, this is an oversimplified um, layout, obviously showing you the basics of how that works. So you've got to think about how your layout fits in. You've got to remember that all wiring associated with the reversing section must run through the AR. If you bypass it, you're still gonna trip, you're gonna get a sputter, um, and if you don't set the, um, the adjustment screw correctly, uh, you'll also have some issues. But um, like, I, like I showed you, this, was, this one just happened to be perfect right out of the box. Uh, I call that luck. Um, but anyway, and then if you, if you do need to adjust it, it does come with parts and pieces on the back. Um, and then of course you get the, you know, no worries warranty um, against uh, this part here is really important external customer damage. So if you're a putz and you're not paying attention, um, you're, you're, you're in good shape. Now I will tell you that um, these things are fairly robust. So if you make a small screw up, it's going to make it through it. Um, but if you make a big screw up, you can see how many little parts and pieces there are and you can fry them. So. Uh, I hope this is helpful to anybody who may be struggling with um, with a auto reversing section. Um, this is obviously a very simplistic use. Um, my layout has a very simplistic use, especially considering that I'm only reversing probably a local train, so it's a small train. Uh, I'm not going to have 40 locomotives trying to pass through an area at a time. So this, this stretch here for a single or a double locomotive and probably five to 10 cars is sufficient. If you have any questions about what you saw or, or wiring up your own auto reverser, uh, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. And I do try to get back to them within 48, 72 hours. Just depends on how the week is. I'll be more than happy to help you out as I can.